Good evening, guys, and welcome back to Between the Ropes TV. Now, as we said on our live, it's a busy week for boxing, which is great for us fans. So, as you'll know, we're going to have a few previews, so we'll get straight into our first one. Ray, we've got Tiafimo Lopez back versus Pedro Camper. Give us a little bit of background on it. Are you excited for this one? I think this is, to answer your question, I would say no, but to be fair, just to ease Tiafimo back into back into the boxing. It's a new weight for him. We knew his body was depleted uh, down at 135. Um, he made the weight-ish against Cambosis Jr. And although he had a few medical issues going into the fight, let's not take that away from Cambosis Jr.'s performance, what performance he put on. Teofimo Lopez, he had an off night. Don't let anyone fool you. I think at mm -hmm. 140, because he is a big, big dude. I keep going back and telling people about that picture I saw of him and Conor Ben. And Teofimo Lopez was making weight in camp for the fight against Cambosis Jr. And he was still a lot bigger than Conor Ben, who was out of camp. That just tells you how much weight mm. Teofimo Lopez has to take off. But his boxing ability is pretty good. He does get hit a lot. He does get hit a lot with the over on that right hand. We saw that when he fought um, Nakatani, the Japanese lad, uh, who was a lot taller than him. I mean, Tio P Fimo Lopez isn't small. Uh, he's quite tall for a lightweight. And I think uh, like well, weight, those dimensions, he'll still be quite big for that weight. Uh, I'm, if he's can tighten up defensively, I can see an explosive performance. He's still got a good job. He's still effective on the outside, Tio. Um, he likes to use his physicality. Uh, when he comes forward, he puts people on the back foot. And he's still got that power. I mean, he's got 12 stoppages, mm. uh, 12 wins inside the distance. So I'm, I'm expecting Teofimo to put on a statement and then open up um, the division because there's some big fights to be made there for him. No, I'd agree. It's, uh, it's Hopefully, for me, this is the start of some activity for Lopez because obviously yeah. he had that big win over Lomachenko. And then it was sort of, you know, fast approaching a year out to the Cambosis fight. And, you know, that was last October, I think it was. And here we are again, you know, sort of end of July and he's back. So I'm hoping, I personally think this has got Lopez stoppage win written all over it myself. Yeah. yeah and I'm hoping that, you know, we get another date through and he's certainly back out October, November, and then a big fight early part of next year. I mean, a little bit on his opponent. For those that don't know anything about Pedro Camper, he's coming into this with a record of 34 wins, one stoppage and one draw. There is 23 stoppage, stoppage wins on his record, which suggests he can punch, but it is important to just add a bit of context to the fact that he's had one fight in the States, which was a fair few years ago. Other than that, he fights in Mexico. But... It is a bit of a padded record, as we uh, seem to be on a little bit of a theme on here on our previews at the minute. There's a few padded records floating about. But he's still 30 years old, and, you know, you can only beat what's in front of you, Ray. Is there any... T I don't think there is, but can you try and sell me on any sort of argument that he could cause any, any issues? This, look, look, Josh, mate, this is his world title fight. Uh, mm. This is his chance to make a big statement over in the States. Um, he's fought there once before, but it was about seven years ago, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. I can't see him getting another opportunity after this. The manner that I think Teofimo Lopez is going to do a job on him, but he'll be going in there thinking this is my big chance. I may not get another opportunity like this again. So I can see him going all out. And he's a Mexican. I've said this about, uh, you know, I, I don't like saying all he, because people say it about Ghanaians all the time, those uh, teak tough Ghanaians and those, those tough Mexicans. I don't like generalising um, in stereotyping, but what I would say is, from what we've seen on our shows over fight camp and particularly over lockdown, is you can't sometimes overlook uh, the records that these guys are bringing in because mm. they come to fight and um, they can punch as well. We've seen it. I've named people like Jeremiah Ponce, uh, Mauricio uh, Lara, um, Strafford. Um, yeah, Safon. Um, you know, also the guy that um, Robbie Davis Jr. for um, uh, Golots. Um, he was hard as nails as well. Um, so yeah, but I think Teofimo Lopez will be prepared. He's wanting to make a statement. So 
it is a potential banana skin, but I, I just I can't see Teofimo Lopez taking this lightly. This could derail his whole career if he loses this one. No, I'd agree. So are you with me? Stoppage win, Lopez? Yeah, stoppage winning. I think he'll he'll be quite comfortable. Um, almost like Ryan Garcia and uh, in his last out in um against Javier Fur too, and I'm expecting a similar sort of statement to be made by Tia Fumo Lopez. I agree. And I, I mean I'm disappointed we've gone the same way, although I totally understand why. Because you know, you did beat me on our last prediction and I want to extend my lead. So yeah. this is the fact to do it. No, it's not the one, but we've got more coming. Guys, we'll wrap it up there. Do keep an eye out. We've got a lot of content already this week and there's more coming. So keep an eye out. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button and we'll see you on the next one.